Hello. Oh man, this has been a good week. I've been looking forward to getting to talk with you about what's going on. Got like five things that I need to cover this week, like new VC, new innovation hub news and acquisition. There's, there's just a lot of stuff that I wanted to chat with you about. And, you know, I like it when we get the chance to hang out together and chat Portland startup. So let's get into it. First and foremost, the big news this week, Reclaim.ai acquired by Dropbox. Now, it's always nice to see a Portland startup get acquired by like a name brand, household name, kind of say it's not really a startup anymore. I mean, like Dropbox is a publicly traded company, but the nice thing to see here was it wasn't just one of those like aqua hire kind of things like reclaim which is up to like 22 people i think they said the whole team got picked up by dropbox and it will be really interesting to see how they're incorporated into the organization if you're not familiar with reclaim they probably maybe one of the first Portland startups to really start talking about AI way back in 2019 and the way that you could incorporate it to make your life easier. Reclaim really focused on business calendaring and time management and personal calendaring and like we all have like 20 or 30 calendars that we're juggling. Reclaim was using AI to help us all figure that out. They still are. I didn't mean they were. They still are. (laughs) They've been acquired. They will continue to do that work as part of Dropbox. But just a really interesting acquisition kind of came out of the blue. You know, uh, not uh, Patrick Lightbody's first experience with, with acquisition. Way back when, I think it was like 2009, Maybe like Patrick, who's the co-founder of Reclaim, had built a service called Browser Mob, which was really load testing for web browsers way back in the day when you had to build the site and then it had to run on a wide variety of browsers and you had to load test to see how it would do on on all these browsers. Uh, And we've kind of come back to that again. So everything comes full circle. But anyway, like, uh, (laughs) I digress. Patrick's company got acquired. Uh, He went on to work at New Relic here in town where he met his co-founder of of Reclaim and they uh, decided to build this company. And like, I've been a user since very, very early and it's been super helpful, especially from a uh, I think the two areas that it's been most helpful is, hey, get these calendars to talk to one another effectively. And then this sounds silly, but literally <laughs> my favorite feature of Reclaim is anytime I've been on a Zoom or a Google Meet or whatever, like Reclaim will give me some time after automatically block my calendar and be like, dude, you need a break. You've been online talking to people about stuff. We respect you and and we're going to help you in that regard. But the other part about Reclaim that was super interesting to me is they were one of the very first like companies I recall that really instituted kind of time blocking into your calendar management. So you you may hear a lot of people talk about time blocking and like, I got to get this done. I got to get this done. I got to get this done. But they really operationalized time blocking in a meaningful way. It was actually useful, not yet another task that you had to manage on your calendar. You could like deal with the AI, like tell it what was important to you, when you needed time for things, when things could move. I don't know. They were just really super thoughtful about the way you use calendaring. Like I, they had one-on-ones that I keep saying had. They're still around. It's still working, but they're part of Dropbox now. Now Dropbox 
will have the ability for like your one-on-ones to move or things where you're like, I have to have this meeting this week, but it doesn't necessarily have to happen at this point in time. That's what reclaim.ai was doing for you. So, uh, word around the campfires, it was a good exit. Uh, there were no terms of the deal disclosed, but I'm really happy that the Reclaim team has wound up part of Dropbox and can't wait to see what Dropbox does with the Reclaim AI, not only the amazing team, but all this amazing functionality that they've happened to acquire. Look, I know you're super busy. You don't have time to track all this stuff. Just subscribe and I'll send you new news on the Portland Stripe community every week, and then probably some other things here and there. Okay, I said five things. Number two, I teased it last week. I knew the news was coming. Uh, so the state of Oregon, Business Oregon, has said we need innovation hubs to help with wayfinding and kind of helping with innovation and making sure people get access to the resources that they need. Uh, they've established a number of innovation hubs around the state, but of course, near and dear to my heart is the Portland Metro region innovation hub. And I am happy to announce officially made it LinkedIn official earlier this week, Rose Kaz, has been named the executive director, the inaugural e executive director of the Portland Metro Region Innovation Hub, or the hub, as they're calling it, because Portland Metro Region Innovation Hub is a mouthful. But uh, Rose Kaz has been hired to serve as the executive director for that organization. She's also hired a couple of folks in navigator positions to help people find their way around and, and figure out the resources they need. So this is super exciting. Like, I don't know if folks remember, but like a few years back, pre pandemic, there was something called the Portland IQ. It was the Portland innovation quadrant. It was a collective of folks like educational institutions, workforce development, economic development, uh, all coming together to say, we really need an innovation hub in Portland. And, and we're really thinking through like how we provided not only access, but geographic kind of proximity for people to figure out all the resources in town and, and who they needed to be talking to to be successful. Now, that program, while it had great momentum and a lot of people involved, it just didn't find the funding or foothold it needed to kind of carry forward. And so the Portland Innovation Quadrant, Portland IQ, uh, just it wasn't successful. It was a great first attempt, and I was deeply involved in, in trying to work there. Um, we tried, but it was not successful because we didn't have the kind of funding that we needed to really make it successful. And so eventually like the state came around business, Oregon was like, Oh, we like this idea. We need to fund this kind of activity. And that's what's behind this new effort around an innovation hub. Uh, I'm really excited to see what happens again. It's super early. Let's give them time to figure out what's going on. Let's give Rose time to like figure out the community and those kind of things and who needs what and like how we're going to fund this and all those other kinds of things. But I can tell you like this selection has come out of the collaboration of 40 plus different organizations all coming together to help ensure that Portland has a metro region innovation hub. So I'm optimistic. It's a lot of work. I want to be realistic. Like there's a lot of stuff to do. And this is a huge, not burden, but huge opportunity to take on for Rose and her team. So I just, I want to give her breathing room. 
We're all super excited. Everyone's like, this is the executive director. We want to lead the organization and really build this thing. And so I think while we, while we can be excited and, and super optimistic, we also just need to give her some room to do what she needs to do. So I will, of course, I've been part of the committee since this thing started and I had the opportunity to participate in the the hiring rounds and all that kind of thing. But all that being said, super excited about this finally coming to fruition and seeing the opportunity that Portland has not only for this hub, but also to collaborate with all the other hubs around the state. So again, congratulations, Rose. Congratulations to the team you're hiring to, to bring on and uh, rest assured that all of us in the community are excited about this, but also rolling up our sleeves and stepping forward to help you achieve your vision for what you think the Portland Metro Region Innovation Hub can and should be. I'll keep you up to date on all the things that Rose and the organization are doing and make sure that you're always in the loop about where you can be involved. So at the beginning, I said new VC fund. Now, uh, you know, it's probably been like last Elevate Capital, maybe, maybe uh, Cascade Angels becoming kind of Cascade Seed Fund. But it's been a while since we've had a new VC fund in town. And uh, while I love all the investors in town and, and how they're participating and supporting startups, it's always nice to get new people, new money, new LPs, new GPs, folks involved in the Portland startup community. And, and just prior to the pandemic, I was really hopeful that we had one. Josh Carter had had kind of like, was that telegraphed? <laughs> he had a telegraphed. He was going to be starting a fund. Uh, unfortunately, he telegraphed that in, say, the end of 2019. And I uh, don't know if you can recall, but some stuff happened in early 2020 that, as Josh shared, kind of disrupted a little of that momentum or activity. So let's not let's not talk about the past. The past is the past. Josh has said, look, I tried this thing. This stuff happened. This fund didn't really come together as I had hoped. But like a good founder, Josh has said, I made some mistakes like this stuff didn't work. I'm taking the stuff that didn't work and I'm using it as a platform to do a better job in the future with a brand new VC fund that he is starting called the Founders First Fund. Just in the formative stages, but uh, Josh wrote up a post that I will link up that he's really talking about like, here's kind of where I was trying to go with the previous fund, didn't really work. But here's what I'm thinking for the future fund. Uh, long story short, you can read the post, but just so I can kind of like summarize it, it's really wants to be the first institutional money in to promising startups in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, really interested in kind of breaking the logjam of, you know, what might be a little more risk averse funding in the Pacific Northwest, looking to align with those funds in the Pacific Northwest that go early, that support founders first and, and kind of get out of the way. That's Josh's whole thesis with the Founders First Fund. Again, I'm just hearing of it this week. So <laughs> you and I are figuring this out together, but I am heartened by kind of his transparency with what happened with the previous fund and what the potential of this new fund could be. Again, we need, we, I don't care how strong your investment community is, and we do have 
strong supporters in our investment community. Uh, I don't care how strong it is. You can always use kind of fresh perspectives and, and new LPs and new money participating. So I remain optimistic and hopeful that this new fund that Josh is pursuing will become uh, kind of that next wave of new funds standing up in Portland, supporting not only Portland founders, but also founders throughout the Pacific Northwest. And ideally will, you know, achieve that success and see that IRR that allow them to become kind of a, a, a new anchor point within the community and, and really fund things going forward. So again, still early, but stay tuned. Founders First Fund should be launching this fall. So I have to assume they're, they're lining up LPs and that kind of thing. And I will let you know when they've had their first close so you can start hounding them for the funding you need to run your startup. But uh, just always good to see new funds standing up in the Pacific Northwest. Number four, have you spent a little too much time doom scrolling on the socials or maybe even joy scrolling with all the, the positive news as of late? Regardless, if you feel like you're spending too much time on social media and you're like, I could use a little motivator to help me stay off social or give me a little breathing room to be more relaxed and mindful and not on the social new startup in Portland called Deo. They uh, have already been selected for the Oregon Entrepreneur Network uh, Angel Tech kind of competition. Uh, but Deo just released the first version of their app in beta on the iOS app store. And it's really designed to say, not only do we want to help you with your screen time, but we're going to reward you for doing a good job with your screen time. So iOS app is available today. You can download it, set up an account, tell it what screen time you want to help manage, and it will help you not only track that you like your use of social on your mobile platform, but will also start setting you up with rewards for not using social as much. Corey and Patrick, who are building Deo, have actively requested Portland brands, Pacific Northwest brands, who are interested in rewarding people for, you know, staying off social and not doom scrolling. They uh, are interested in partnering with companies who are, who are interested in supporting that kind of activity. So if you are one of those companies and you're like, look, I like the social, but you need to take a break and I want to reward you for taking a break. That's what day is for. And they are there to help you connect with the consumers who you would like to be interacting with because they're not using social. I know you want to interact with the, the consumers who are using social. Sure. But maybe, maybe you want to help them when they're not using social and that can be a thing too if so get hold of the day of folks i'm excited to see where this goes excited to see how they do at oen angel oregon tech and uh i will be keeping an eye on this one i'll let you know when android launches but for now this seems like a very portlandy pursuit that we appreciate the social but we also appreciate there are times when you shouldn't be on the social. So if that's important to you and you could use a little help with that, please check out Deo on iOS with Google Android coming soon. All right. This one's kind of a throwaway. Like, not really. Like, please stay, <laughs> stay here. Let's talk about it. But like, it's one of those where it's like, eh, weird vanity metric maybe, but the final thing I wanted to highlight this week is that the Portland Startup Slack, which is a free Slack instance that the Portland startup community hangs out on, chats with one another, 
people who are new to Portland or thinking about moving to Portland can hang out on this Slack, talk to startup folks. Uh, it's just a really nice environment. It feels like Twitter in 2009, or it feels like Threads kind of feels like right now. So uh, Slack, really nice, lots of people engaged, but not as many as are actually on the platform. So there's a small group of us that are chatting all the time, people engaging, helping one another, a lot of DM activity. But I think the big thing I wanted to announce this week is that we have officially hit 7,000 members on the Portland Startup Slack. Again, like not all those folks are active, <laughs> not even. I mean, maybe, maybe 5% of those folks are active on a weekly basis. But still, if you're looking to connect, with somebody from the Portland startup community, you're like, hey, I really want to hit up Rick, that's me, about like this thing in the Portland startup community. You can join the Portland startup Slack, you can DM me, I will get back to you, maybe we meet up, chat about stuff, whatever. Or maybe there's like, hey, I'm really interested in AI. Maybe I can join the AI channel and their weekly Friday get together where they chat about AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning. That could happen if you join the Portland Startup Slack. Another thing that could happen is it just doesn't have to all be typey typey online. There's a channel called Social Beer and the Social Beer channel on the Portland Startup Slack regularly invites folks to in real life gatherings where you get to meet other people on the Portland Startup Slack face to face. You get to hang out, you get to meet each other, you get to talk about what you're building. I'm telling you, this Portland Startup Slack, like it's a really good way to connect with people in the Portland startup community. So if you're having a hard time getting connected, if you haven't found the events, you need to attend. Please join Portland Startup Slack, come hang out with the people in the community, and we promise that we will work to get you connected as quickly as possible because we're glad you're here, we're glad you're interested in the Portland Startup community, and we wanna make sure that you have access to all the people to whom you need access. Five things got you through it. I know you're busy. I want to let you go. I blabbed a lot because I, I'm super excited this week about all the stuff going on. Uh, I hope you're holding up. I uh, hope you're hanging in there until we get the chance to chat again. Please, until we talk next week, please keep up the good work. What's that? You think the news happening this week was awesome? There's also all of this news right here.